Hey guys, it's Coffee. Welcome back to Socrates Jones, Pro Philosopher. Uh, so last time, we fucking died, I guess. And, uh, yeah, we hit a deer, just like Billy warned us about. Um, and honestly, at this point, I'm I'm pretty intrigued. Um, I'm really, really curious about where this story is going, exactly. So, um, without further ado, uh, let's start chapter one, Through the Looking Glass. Hey, look, a new arrival. Do you think he's okay? Of course he's not okay, Ru Rousseau? Oh no. He wouldn't be here if he was okay. Well, maybe he's okay in this spiritual sense. Ugh, my head. I didn't think it was possible to feel this much pain. Hold on, he's coming too. Hey, buddy, what's your name? Oh, don't tell me we're actually dead. Socrates? Sorry, didn't quite catch that. It's... Socrates. Did he say... Socrates? Oh. My. God. Oh my god! He's back! He's back! Socrates is back! Oh, don't get your hopes up. Oh. Quick, let's take him to the Arbiter! Huh? Hold on, what? No! Put me down! What? What? What is going on? Where have you taken me? Uh, hi! Oh god, who are you? Greetings, great thinker Socrates. Ah! D d demon P Please! Please don't eat me. Hmm. This is not the great thinker Socrates. The great thinker Socrates was much wiser. And far more bearded. <sighs> yeah, I could have told you that. Ari, oh, thank god you're okay. Did it hurt you? Hi, Dad. Oh, you are kin to Ariadne Jones? A sharp thinker. We were just discussing the nature of existence. Oh, a friend of yours? What? I suppose I should introduce myself. I am the Arbiter, overseer of the intelligible realm. The what realm? The intelligible realm. The realm of ideas. The plane from which all thought originates, and the final resting place for those who concern themselves with the art of philosophy. The final- wait, hold on a moment, I- Do not worry, Socrates. Your presence here is entirely a mistake. You are no philosopher, after all. Your interesting name must have confused the existential sorting algorithm. I must have a word of Turing. Oh, like Alan Turing. It's cute. And, uh... Ari? Still alive. Her knowledge, I'm sure, contributed to this misfiling. Oh, thank god. Okay, not that I'm not enjoying this peek up, peek behind the moral curtain, but, uh, what does that mean for us? Well, Ariane Jones, I suppose it means you can leave. Well, where did that come from? That wasn't there a moment ago. Right now, in the real world, you are unconscious. Comatose may be more appropriate. But the moment you step through the gate, you will wake up in your hospital bed in New York. In a large amount of pain, but alive. It's going to be painful? It would be, yes, but you have no need to worry now, Socrates. There is no pain in your future. Oh! I got out of the crash and injured? Not exactly. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Y you don't... You don't mean... I apologize for the confusion. I said Socrates was not a philosopher. I never meant to imply that he was not dead. Oh, God. So we actually died? How? I did not expect this to get so dark. 
Jeez. When you leave, we'll get him filed away to the appropriate afterlife. One involving a lot of numbers, I suppose. Is this a joke to you, Arbder? No, it is simply the way of the world. You have a life, he does not. There is no way he can possibly leave. But you can't just... He's my dad. Ari, stop, please. But... Look, as much as I hate it, I'm not sure we can talk our way out of this one. So, for now, just listen. Okay, this might be the last time we get to speak. Will you just... No, I love you, and tell your mother I'm sorry for me, please. Remember to do your homework, and water the plants, and don't stay out too late, and whatever you do... Arbiter, can I talk to you for a moment? Of course. What? Uh, Ari, I was... Hold that thought, Dad. I'll be right back. I was saying my goodbyes. This is kind of killing my moment. Well, Socrates, I must amend my initial statements. There is, in actuality, one way out. There is? Yes. An ancient wager set down by the original Arbiter, and reserved for the best of thinkers. After talking with your daughter, I have de decided to offer you a chance at this challenge. If you can provide an answer to one of the great philosophical questions, the nature of morality, one request will be granted. An answer. Yes, a way to think about morality that is internally consistent and compatible with the realities of the world. However, in this game, you are only allo allotted one chance. And if I find your answer uninsightful, I'm stuck here. Correct. All parties involved must remain here for eternity. But if he is able to find the nature of morality, we can both walk through that door. Correct. Okay, Ari, fess up. What on earth did you do? Um, not much. I just told him that you're actually a brilliant debater, is all. What? Are you crazy? I'm an accountant. I can't... Ari... I appreciate the sentiment, but we both know I don't know anything about philosophy. Look, it's not like you're going to be alone. I'm going to stay, and there are people here who know even more than I do. Just give it a shot. Please? The rules really don't stop me from asking others for help. No, they do not. However, you will have to use your own judgment to determine whether the ideas that others provide meet the criteria I've established. I know I'm going to regret this. <laughs> Very well then, Arbiter. I accept your wager. So be it. The door will reopen when you have completed your task. I wish you luck. Well, uh, I suppose I should get started. <clears throat> Can anyone here help me find the nature of morality? Uh, what is that? Sounds like an earthquake. Really? I thought it so I thought it was more like a football game. No, you've done it. Huh? Oh, jeez. Wait, talk to me! I know the answer, I swear I do! Morality is purely conceptual, cannot be defined! No morality is found in the circumference of the moon! Ah, oh, what the hell? Let me go! Arbiter, do something! What, is he not getting help? You call this help? They're going to tear him apart! Hmm, well, very well if you insist. Silence! One of you will come forward at a time, and no more. Now, which of you thinks they can help this accountant answer his question? I believe I can! Ah, of course. You Thifero of Athens. How do you fare? Yeah, I apologize if I... in advance if I butcher any of these names. Quite well, noble arbiter. 
Uh, who is this guy? Euthyphero was a prominent religious scholar and priest back in ancient Greece. He famously debated your namesake many millennia ago. Indeed. My pious ways were known and respected throughout the land. As a sophist, it was my job to educate those who were ignorant, such as yourself. Wow. Fucking rude. Seriously? <laughs> Wait a minute. Listen, my child. I will share my insight with you. Oh god. Okay, so presentation, good is what is holy. Got it. My religious studies have given me insight to the nature of right and wrong. Human beings are fallible and vain. They make mistakes. A god, however, is a superior being. Everyone possesses wisdom far beyond our own. Thus, whatever a god commands must be good. And there you have it. The source of morality. Okay, mankind is flawed, added to ideas. Morality comes from the gods. Okay. Is there a problem, child? Well, I'm not exactly religious. I see. Poor unfortunate soul, having strayed so far from the light. You dick. If you allowed your mind to remain clouded, you will never win your way out of here. Clouded, huh? Ari? Listen, Dad. Euthyphro's argument benefits from its simple nature, but I can't help but he's making it seem more simple than it actually is. Okay, so what can I do? Sometimes, by examining the argument closely, you can find assumptions that were previously unstated. I bet you can find something here like that. More information is always useful, and can help you get to the bigger issues. Well, Socrates, is this the answer you seek? I don't think I'm ready to bet my life on the gods just yet, Arbiter. Euthyphro, I think I need to ask you a few questions. Alright, Dad. Good luck. Oh, something tells me this is going to be a lot harder than the tutorial. Okay, um... Let's see. Okay, so what is on our thing again? Okay, mankind is flawed. Euthyphro believes that, senti that sentient beings are flawed and often make bad judgments. Okay. Morality comes from the gods. Euthyphro believes that things are good because the gods like them. Okay. So let's... I'm just gonna look at these statements real quick. Things are fallible in vain, they make mistakes. God, I'm a superior being. Okay. Everyone possesses wisdom far beyond our own. Okay, something about this statement sounded really weird to me, and I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling I'm supposed to question it somehow. Okay. I guess for clarification first. Everyone. Excuse me? You said everyone. Oh, that's right. Because are we implying that there are multiple gods? Is I think that's what we're getting at, right? Your point, child? Well, I've been assuming you're referring to the commands of a specific deity, but... Well, which god are we talking about? Oh gods, give me strength to deal with this ingrate. That doesn't answer my question. Right now, is there a particular god giving you strength? Does it matter? There are many gods. Greek, Hebrew, Egyptian, Norse. There are differences between them, but any would fit the ideas I described here. There are different gods. Okay, so that gave me something. I see. Good work, Dad. Huh? You've uncovered an unstated part of Euthyphro's views by closely examining his argument. Finding things like this can really help you out. If you don't have enough tools, the person you are debating may just hand you some. Now get back in there and find the larger problem. Wait, hold on. Are you telling me this idea is going to be useful? I don't know. Maybe. You're supposed to figure this out by yourself, remember? I think I'm already pushing the helping you threshold, dead guy. Right. Okay. Wait, so let me just look at that real quick. Um... There are different gods. Euthyphro's philosophy applies to all gods, though they may not have different ideas. 
Oh, I'm sorry, they may- they might have different ideas. Okay. Let's see what I can do with that. You try right and wrong. Whatever God commands must be good. Okay. Must be a way to use that to my advantage. Come on, Socrates, think. There's too much at stake here. What do I... Okay. I'm assuming clarification and backing will be our most useful right now. So... God is a superior being. Maybe this? Like, I don't... I'm not exactly sure. What do, you, what do you mean by that? A god has abilities far beyond our comprehension. These abilities render them superior to us mere mortals. Oh, that didn't really help me at all. Um... Hmm. Everyone possesses wisdom far beyond our own. Whatever God commands must be good. Maybe I can ask for backing on this? Can you back that up? My child, who is more fit to judge morality? A wise man or a fool? The wise man, of course. And, as all gods have infinite wisdom, it, we should defer to their judgment. Thus, gods are the ideal source of morality. Wait. Whatever god commands must be good. So what did it say here? Okay, wait. Okay, this seems like a bit of a stretch, but it seems like what Euthyphro is saying is that, like... Huh. That... God... Okay. So that if a god commands something, it must be good. But we have a statement that says things are good because the gods command them? So maybe that's the contradiction? I don't know. This is what is wrong with your argument. Is it, child? Um, I think so? Oh, no. I'm not so sure. Damn. You serious? Okay, I'm confused here. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe back in here. Can you back that up? Being immortal, gods have had the infinite years of learning and experience. Their immortality gives them a perspective that we cannot hope to achieve. Wait. But isn't everyone here immortal in a sense? No, we are all dead, child. There is a difference. Wisdom is derived from experience with the world, and our experiences in that regard have ended. Speak for yourself. I'm not done yet. Okay, that didn't really help me at all. Hmm. Mankind is flawed and there are different gods. Okay. Maybe there are different gods, maybe that's something to do with that. Oh. Okay. Maybe this is something? Because he's saying whatever god commands must be good, but. If we're also going on the assumption that there are different gods that have different ideas, maybe that's what I can get him on? Nonsense! Oh, I think I got it. Okay. Euthyphro, uh, if we could stop for a moment, I'd like to clear up a few things. You said that different religions have different gods, right? Yes, child. And sometimes these gods have different views. Indeed. Piety comes in many forms. Hmm, okay. Dad, is something up? I... don't know. I may have found a problem here. Really? That's great! Go ahead and present it. Dad? I... Sorry, this is just a little intimidating. What if everyone laughs at me? Just present it, Dad. No one is going to laugh at you. 
This isn't some deer repellent salesman. This is the real deal. Real things are at stake here, like me. Dad, just present it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> oh, every time this music kicks in, it's so badass. Okay, Euthyphro, there is a problem with your position. Is that so, child? It is so. Look, you claim that morality comes from the gods, that we can trust that whatever they command is right. But it seems to me that if the gods disagree, that then that puts your idea in a weird place. You yourself said we can't judge their wills for ourselves, but when different gods think different things are good, what would actually be good? That would make the gods impossible to use as a source of morality. Right? Wait, did I actually get this? No way. That was a pretty lackluster presentation, Dad. Oh, okay, come on, I was proud of it. Hey! While this may be true, the validity of the argument is not rooted in style points. Despite lacking both flair and vocabulary, Socrates has a valid point. As I believe you already know, Euthyphro. Hm. Yes, yes, as I recall, the first Socrates made very similar points. And what? He just decided to ignore them? Arrogant son of a- like you, he lacked the faith required to see the truth. Your blasphemy will not take you as far as you think. Poor child, let me show you where you have lost your way. Ooh, okay, another round. It is true that different deities have different desires, in my religion and between religions. I admit this may be a source of confusion. However, there are many points on which these divine beings agree. For example, most deities agree that it is wrong to kill without cause. Clearly, what the gods agree upon is always good. Is that better, child? Well said, Euthyphro. Thank you. Thank you, Arbiter. As you can see, my child, the gods overcome all obstacles. Hmm. What are you thinking, Dad? Well, his argument is certainly more nuanced now. But something tells me it won't stand up to examination. Hmm. I'm sorry, Euthyphro, but I still have some questions for you. Okay, I think this is where I present that thing about um, morality coming from the gods, because there's a certain statement in here. Okay. The cause. Okay, this, this is the one. Okay. So clearly what the, gre the gods agree upon is always good. But I think this is where I present this, because he's saying that, like... Okay. So things are good because gods like them. But this sort of- okay, but that, his statement implies that, like, that gods like- that gods like good things because they are good, if that makes sense. Okay, let me see if there's- okay, so that was the end of the, uh, thing. Okay, I'm gonna go back and present that, actually, because that might work. Oh, okay, yay. This is wrong because... because you said morality comes from the gods. I don't understand what you're trying to say, child. That is the core idea of which this argument is elaborating. But... but if whatever the gods agree upon is good? If morality comes from them, uh... It sounds like there's a contradiction in there somewhere. Oh, okay. I kinda get that feeling too. Let's look at these last parts a bit more closely. Oh, okay. So maybe I did that too soon? Flawed. 
Maybe I can ask for backing on this, like for clarification or backing. Wait for backing? Okay. Can you back that up? Are you familiar with the Quran? Anyone who kills a human being, it shall be as though he has killed all, ma all of mankind. And in Hinduism, he who, he who commits murder must be considered as the worst offender. There are countless examples throughout religions. Oh, uh, well that didn't really help me. What if I ask for clarification? What do you mean by that? I think this is pretty clear, uh, yeah. It is. To take the life of another is wrong. Many gods agree about this, don't you? Oh, okay. Okay, um... Oh, maybe about the fact that they're all different? That they have different ideas? Because they can't always agree on everything? Oh no, I did this wrong, didn't I? Damn it. We already saw that. Damn. What do you mean by that? If the gods agree upon something, we can be sure that something is good. Their collective wisdom is incalculable after all. Hmm. Press for backing, maybe? Can you back that up? Excuse me? Why couldn't something the gods agree upon be bad? Oh. The gods and their superior wisdom would never agree upon something that wasn't good. They would only tell us to do things that would lead to positive ends. To suggest otherwise is blasphemy. Huh. Interesting. Indeed. And if you don't mind, I'd like to further examine that idea. Oh, okay. New statement added. Uh... For surely- uh, <clears throat> Okay. For surely if things are good, the gods will agree upon them. Okay. Okay, so I think I was thinking way too ahead because I think this is the, uh... This is probably the statement I was looking for. Damn it. Okay. So, if, if things are good, gods will agree upon them. But this says, um, if gods agree upon them. If gods agree upon something, then it is good. Nonsense! Yes! Oh god. Okay, so I've been waiting to- I finally get to use that statement. Okay. <laughs> what now, child? Eesh. He's glaring at me again. No. Pull yourself together, Socrates. You have a point to make, so make it. Did you intend to speak, child, or did you just shout nonsense for your own amusement? Right. Sorry. Okay, Euthyphro. The core of your argument is that morality comes from the gods, right? Yes, my child. And this is true because gods would only command what is good. Yes. Also true. There may be hope for you yet. Is that so? Because I think you just revealed a major problem in your argument. What? I... I have no idea what you mean, child. Really? Well then, let me ask you one last question. Are things good because gods command them, or do gods merely command things because they are good? Yes! This is the point I was trying to make the entire time. What? What? Look, Euthyphro, you have said over and over that the gods would never ask to, to do something bad. That they restrict their commands to things that which would be good for mankind. But in order for this to be true, wouldn't the things they command have to be already good? They would need to have value rooted in something other than the gods. Oh, nice catch, Dad! The fact is, even in a world where gods existed, they could not be the source of good. They would merely serve to point out good things which already exist. Good things that are good because of other things. Excellent point, Socrates Jones. Very clearly presented. I agree. Though, maybe I could coach you on vocab? Things isn't exactly a scholarly term. Thanks, but I think I was concerned with Euthyphro's thoughts. What do you say, Euthyphro? Are moral actions good because the gods command them, or do the gods command moral actions because they are good? No! No! Just as I thought. You've got nothing. 
you talk a big you talk a big game, but you cl- you clearly haven't thought your points out through. There is no way I could accept this argument as my own. It's too holy. <laughs> nice one. Insolent wretch. I try to save you, and this is how you repay me? You won't last to win your way out of here, child. The gods will smite you for your blasphemy. Will they? Somehow I think I'll be fine. I've already died once, after all. What more could happen? Damn. That was pretty badass. <laughs> there are no there are no limits on the extent of smiting. Just you wait. You will be nothing but a pile of dust. Of smolder. A warning to all who dare insult the gods. Silence. I believe we've heard enough from you, Euthyphro. Socrates was right to question you. In the end, your philosophy failed to measure up. Go and reflect upon this. But... Go and reflect. Yes, Arbiter. Okay, so that was chapter one. Um, I guess I should have expected that difficulty spike. I was not entirely prepared, but I think I've managed to get a hold on the general mechanics, and I don't know, maybe I won't be as bad at this as I thought I'd be. Um, this really took a dark turn, I'm just excited to see where the story goes next. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.